So this is second part of the lecture 6, so let's call it 6b, and we'll start with the examples of computations of residues. So, example. Okay, examples. And for the following functions, or maybe for the given functions f of z, identify their isolated singularities and compute the residue residue residues at these points. So let us begin with the function A. Let me write it down F of Z will be equal and let me put it this will be z cube minus z5 so we have seen this function in the previous examples we actually identified all this this was done previously in previous lecture so this will be 1 minus z2 and in such a case we have here that z, we have the following isolated singular points, z1 is 0, and you can easily notice this is a pole of order 3, and here, of course, you understand that indicates the order, and then maybe let's go a little farther, factorize it more, put here minus 1 at the top, and I put here z minus 1, z plus 1, so we are getting here that z2 is equal to 1, and z3 is equal to minus 1, are simple poles. Simple poles. So let's compute the uh, residue easy ones. So let's start with the easy one. For simple poles, the residue is always easy. So let me write it down. The residue of this function f of z at the point 1, it will be equal. And we remember how to do it. So we have here the formula. So this will be our function p of z. This will be my function q of z. So the residue at the f of z at the point, simple point, simple pole will be just simply p z zero, and this will be q z zero, and you take the prime. So by using that one, so one is one, and then you have here three z square z square so let's put it like this this is second one so this is minus 5 z4 so of course it becomes z2 is equal to 1 so this is 3 i forgot i forgot no i didn't forget any minus 5 and we are getting minus 1 half so the first residue is computed Similarly, we get the second residue and minus 1. So this is the same formula. Now this is at the point z1 minus 1. So here uh, 4. I've, that's definitely 4. And I'm getting this is the same thing. Minus 1 to the square. Minus 5 minus 1 to the 4 is equal to 1 and I'm getting again 3 minus 5 which is equal to minus 1 half the residue is done 
So let's go to the next residue. This is the pole of order 3. So in such a case, what do I need to do? I need to take the residue of this function at the point equal z, z, or maybe write it down just simply, uh, just put here 0. So this is pole of order 3, so this will be 1 over 2 factorial. And then you have here the derivative of the order 2, and this is dz2 of the expression of function f of z. Let's write it down. This is uh, z cubed times f of z. So let me, in this case, and this is at z is equal to 0. So we are getting here that that one is equal to d squared dz squared and now we can look at the formula so we can simplify using this formula that one so we are getting here this one is equal to this is 1 minus z squared and z is equal to 0 so this is equal to 1 half and take the first derivative and the first derivative will be just simply 1 minus z squared squared and this will be minus 1 and then you have here minus 2z and then you take the next derivative and we obtain that this is equal 1 half and here we are getting the derivative of the first one is 2, and this is 1 minus z squared squared, and this will be minus, and that will be plus, so this will be 2z, and this will be uh, 2, 1 minus z squared 2z, and everything divided by y minus z squared to the power 4, of course, we can simplify it. So we are getting here d. This is 1 minus z squared. This will be plus 4z squared. Actually, it's 8. 8z squared divided by 1 minus z squared cubed. Evaluated at z equals 0. And we are getting the value is equal to 2. The value is equal to 2. So now, actually, we can compute the same, the same residue in a different way. So let me show how to do it. So the residue of this function, so let me just simply write f of z at z at 0 can be done by using geometric series. geometric series. So how it goes? So first we are getting here that we have here this formula. So f of z is equal to, here we have 1 over z cubed and this is 1 and this is 1 minus z squared. So I can consider this to be my q. So we have here 1 1 minus q is equal to the qn and is equal to 0 to infinity. So I'm getting that that formula becomes z cubed and here I have here 1 plus z squared plus mm -hmm, z4 plus uh, plus 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 other one. In this moment I just realized I lost one half here, so this will be like that. You see, I lost that one. It goes here. So not a big deal. We corrected it, so the answer is one. And then you can now check out what is the Lorentz series here. So I can simplify it. So it starts with the third one. Then you have here plus one over z 
and this is plus z1 and plus 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 and you look which one is the residue so this is your residue this is your a minus one so we again we are getting here that the residue of f of z at zero is equal to one and you learn a kind of a idea that the residue can be sometimes computed much quicker not by applying the the formula, this formula that requires two differentiation, and one mistake was done on the way because we just for because I I forgot this one half. So that one it seems to be much much more effective. You can see it worked pretty quick. Just two lines, and you have basically so practically even one line, and you got the answer, and you got the answer. So maybe let's do another example. And this example is, for example, this is my b. So in this example, consider the function f of z, which is equal, and let me check it out. So z to the power 2n, maybe I separate them, divided by, and this is 1 plus z to the power n. Clearly, you can see clearly here, this is your power. So which one is the singular point? Singular point, write it down, z0 is equal minus 1. It is a pole of order n. That's n here. That's pole of order n. So in order to compute the residue, we use the formula residue. And here we have here the function. So I have to take the function f of z and z0. This is the pole of order n. So this is 1 over n minus 1 factorial. Now I take the dn minus 1 derivative. Oh, we have to compute this derivative n minus 1. And then I multiply that function by the z minus 1 to the, sorry, plus 1 to the power n, z to the power 2n, and that actually is the same, so I write it down correctly, in the same form, so we will easily cancel it, and the derivative must be computed at the point z0 is equal to minus 1. So let's simplify a little. So this is equal n minus 1 factorial. And here we have here n minus 1 dz n minus 1 of that function z to n at the point z0 equals minus 1. So let's compute the derivative. Let's use the margin. I will maybe use different color. I like to, and let's say, not mix up the things so so the first derivative take the derivative d dz of z 2n what do i get i'm getting 2n and this will be z 2n minus 1 so if you take the second derivative so this will be 2 z 2n i'm getting here this is equal z 2n 2n minus 1 and this is z 2n minus 2. You can wonder what would be the exactly n minus, maybe do it like this first, k. So let's say a uh, k derivative. So this is dzk of z2n. So you can see that in this case it would be 2n. This is 2n minus 1. And then you go over till you reach here. You see this is number 2, so maybe this is this is number 2 here, this is number 2 here, this is number 1 here, it's number 1 here. So the same, the same we'll be observing in this case, namely we will have here dot 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 and this will be 2n minus k plus 1 times 
and this will be z to the power 2 n maybe not nice z to the power 2 n minus k 2 n minus k so substitute k is equal n minus 1 and we are getting here d n minus 1 d z n minus 1 of z to n will be equal 2 n 2 n minus 1 times 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 and this will be 2 n minus n and this is plus 1 and that will be plus 1 and times and this will be z 2n minus n plus 1 so the answer will be 2n 2n minus 1 dot 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 2n minus so this will be just simply let's do the subtraction so this will be n n this will be n plus 2 and here we have z to the power n plus 1. Yeah, n plus 1, this is definitely 1. And that implies that I can now compute this d n minus 1, d z n minus 1 of that function n at the point z0 is equal to minus 1 and the answer will be hmm, maybe write it down here this will be 2n 2n minus 1 blah 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 n minus plus 2 and this will be minus 1 to the power n plus 1 n plus 1 Sorry, so let me write it down here. And now I can make a further simplification. I will just simply write here 2n factorial. That means I multiply that one by n plus 1 factorial and I divide it by n plus 1 factorial. So this gives me 2n factorial. And in the bottom, and in the bottom, I'm also getting I'm also getting n plus 1 factorial and this is minus 1 to the n plus 1 and now let us write the answer residue of f of z at the point minus 1 is equal now please do not forget we have here this this guy which is is the factorial standing here so we have start with this factorial so we have here 1 divided by n minus 1 factorial and then the residue is equal to this n plus 1 factorial n minus 1 to the power n plus 1 yeah so n plus 1. And then, let me look again at the problem, yes. Mm -hmm. Yeah, we did it. And we can go to the next example, call it C. Let me see if I have something maybe more interesting. So let's say I have here Fz, and I put here equal, start with simple one. And then we try a couple of more complicated and sine of z. So here, of course, you identify that the, the uh, you have to identify that all the singular points are are poles, and z zero equal zero is a pole, pole, and of order order two. Indeed, notice that here. If you look here at the function, if you look at the function sine, so we have here that z 
sine of z can be written as z squared times, and here you can simply say this is 1 minus z squared 3 factorial plus z4 four, four factorial blah, minus blah, blah, blah. So that's exactly, this is exactly one of the manipulations on the power series expansions that we actually did previously in the previous lecture when we were looking at the examples of the of the uh, <coughs> types of the singular points. So here of course we have the pole of order and then of course you also notice that sine of z is equal to zero if z is equal k pi, k is equal plus minus one plus minus two so we can call that one zk plus minus three bk. So we have here the additional point zk equals k pi and this is a and this one is a simple pole. Simple pole. And that one is for k of again plus minus one plus minus two etc. Why this simple pole? Yeah, because take this function, so take this function q of z is equal z times sine of z and then compute its derivative. So let's do the derivative. q prime of z is equal, so this is equal to sine of z plus and this will be z times cosine of z. And now q of k pi is equal to zero, but q prime of k pi, what it is? So here we are getting this is zero, and the second one is equal k pi, and that one is minus one to the power k different than zero. So the order of this, the order of this pole is indeed one, it means it's a simple pole. So this is a simple pole. Yes, let's start as usual from the computations of the residues in the case which is much simpler to do it. So let me do it like that. So and write it down, residue. And this one is for f of z at the point zk. So that will be pi k k is equal plus minus one plus minus two etc so you look here and you see yes indeed we have here two functions so two functions the top one will be the top one will be the function which will be that one will be our p of z and that one will be q of z so the, the the residue, as you remember, f of z of this p by q of mm, maybe write it down. Residue of p of z divided by q of z at this z k, because this is a simple pole, will be p z k divided by q prime at z k. So that's the formula. This is for simple pole zk so let's apply this formula and then i can just simply write it down that i'm getting here so what is this so this will be e e yes yes write it down this will be e to the k pi and in the bottom, we just computed this, so that's the value q, q prime at the bottom, so this one is equal k pi divided by minus 1 to the power k, so we can write it down, this is k pi divided by k pi, and this is minus 1 to the power k. And, and the residue is computed. So let's look at the residue at 0, so... so so our function, let's write it again, this is e z divided by z, and this one is sine of z. And this time, 
I would like to avoid using the formula because if you write down the, the formula it will require computations of the derivatives and maybe I, I would like to do it in the different maybe much much simpler way namely I, I was motivated by the example this previous example that one where we use the formula for residue involving the the derivative computations of the derivatives and then here we have also that one the power series expansion power series expansion notice that here the situation was much simpler because you could just simply compute the derivative at the given point but since cost since the function sign at zero is zero unfortunately it has to be done using the limit so maybe let me write down the formula so you will actually understand what I'm talking about so I need to compute that one then I need to take the limit as z goes to zero why because I will have to take that function multiply it by z square so in this case the z square just simply means this is e z put here z mm, sorry 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 this has to be d dz not raise it. okay so this is d try to erase everything so this is d dz and then i have here this z times e z and this one is sine of z at z equals to zero so now you compute the derivative you obtain kind kind of the so let's say let let that's just for the purpose of of of, of uh, showing the differences between the two approaches so so here we have here e z derivative of the first one which is equal to 1 plus z times sine of z and this is minus z and this will be e z cosine of z divided by sine square of z and now good luck with computations of this limit so good luck good luck and of course one should remember that uh, there is a kind of a bad attitude for those people who choose mathematics as, as, a, as, as a career because those are the lazy people. They are always look at the ways to do the things with the minimum effort. And that's what we are going to do here. So namely, we are just going to consider this function and we are trying to figure it out what is the residue by using the power series expansion expansions of all of those particular functions so here i have here the function ez and that function we know what is the power series expansion this will be z square this is two and then you have here farther and then you have here the one standing here and then i put here z standing here and you take power series expansion of the sign like we did it before so this will be z minus and this will be z cubed divided by, by 3 factorial plus z5 divided by 5 factorial minus 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 then i see that while i can determine the the, 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 the kind I will remember I did it here we determine this 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 singularity uh, the type of the singularity doing exactly the same things here here so let's let's repeat it so pull out z from the from this bracket so we will be getting that this one is equal let's put it one over z square first out and then I have here plus z plus z square over 2 
plus z cubed over 3 factorial is 6 and this will be plus plus and what do I have here? I have here 1 and this will be 1 minus z is gone maybe I take this z square out make it sure this is there are no titles this is minus I take z square out and I have here the z so what is this this one is just simply 1 divided by 3 factorial and this is plus z squared divided by 2 5 factorial and this is minus 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 and I look at this expression and I think again about the geometric series so this is like 1 minus Q. So this would be my Q. This is my Q. This is my Q. And if this is my Q, I can basically rewrite the whole expression as a geometric series and then I have no more fractions of this type. And this will start with 1. 10 I have here z square 1 3 factorial plus z square 5 factorial and then minus minus and then you have next term next term will be take the square of it so this will be z4 and 1 3 factorial plus z square 5 factorial minus minus square and many many others but I'm only interested in the coefficient standing by a minus 1. That means a minus 1 stands by the power minus 1. z to the power minus 1, this expression. So where this power will be? So I see that in this case, in order to have it, I need to have the power that is, you see, I divide it by z squared. So I need to find all the powers that are exactly the powers the first power so I look here and I say oh I'm getting the first power by multiplying that to two guys and if I multiply y by z square mm, that will be already that will be the zero power because z square divided by z square is z to the zero so so it is not correct so I'm actually obtaining that if I multiply these two terms there will be exactly the coefficients of the a minus 1, so a minus 1 is definitely equal to 1 from this particular, this particular situation. So maybe it's a good idea to do another example of this type. So let me check how much space I have. So here let's call it, what, what number is this? This is CD. So let's put here like this. This is d. And I take similar function. Maybe put it like this. e to the z. I put here z. Hmm. Why not to take here Okay. I put here, let's say e z. And I put here z cube. And I put here sign of z. So, without doing too much talk, I can immediately copy from the previous solution. This will be z to the power 4. Yes, to the power 4. 1 z, one z comes from that expression. Then I have here e to the... So, this will be like the e to the z will be just simply 1, like it is above, plus z squared over 2 plus z cube over 6 and this is plus 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 and then we have here again the same the same as we had before the same power series z square 5 cube minus minus plus z 4 1 3 factorial plus z cube 5 factorial minus minus square and more terms following there. So now I look maybe red. So this is my function EZ 
and this is my function you see uh, obtained by pulling out one z from the denominator and then converting it to the power series using the using this particular here expression here so this is this one this one this this expression the same expression so so that that's the that's the thing that's how, how it was obtained so now I look for the a minus one so a minus one so I understand that it, here we have here the the power 4, so this will be, if you want to have a minus 1, then this is z to the power 4, then you need to have here all the terms, so this is all the terms with the power 3. All the terms in the, with the power 3. So we have to identify in this product all the terms with the power 3. So let me look at, so where is the term with the power 3? So if I take for example, multiply 1 by z cube is the term with the power 3. So let me write it down. All these terms, so let me write it down. So this is 1 to the z4, and I'm having the first one. So this will be z cube times 6 times 1 is the first one. Then I look, where is another one? This is z square. I have here that this is z square. So in this case, if I take that term and multiply it by z, then I will get another, another one. So that means this will be like a z multiplied by z squared divided by 3 factorial. And then I see there are no more. There are no more. All the other powers will be higher or 0 power, uh, 1 power, 2 power, but 3 powers, no. The third power of, of, the, of z is not going to be obtained from other, from, from other multiplications term by term. So, so that means that's it. So in such a case, let's simplify this expression. So we are getting this is 1 over z. And then I have here 1, 6 plus, oh, this is also 6. So 1, 6, and we are getting here that this is equal one third divided by z and that implies that this is your residue so this is equal to the a minus one that's the power minus one so the answer is the residue of the residue of this function f of z at z is equal to zero is equal to one third one third and we have this computations finished so let me maybe conclude these examples like uh, let's let's maybe come back maybe one more example I I, I would say like this it would be CDE Maybe let's do something like a, and write it down. Put it like this: one plus z square plus z four times sine one over z. So we have seen this uh, particular. Uh, function in the previous examples uh, what we were doing when we were considering finding the Lorentz series here we can immediately recognize that the z is equal to zero so maybe like this z is equal to zero is an essential singularity so in order to compute the residue, you basically you need actually to identify the, the Lorentz series expansion. So let me do it. So in this case, I'm not going to compute the whole Lorentz series expansions. I'm not interested in getting this Lorentz series expansion. I'm just only interested in 
finding the residue. So this will be 1 over z minus 1, 3 factorial z to the power 3, plus 1, 1, and this will be 5 factorial z to the power 5, minus 1, 7 factorial z to the power 7, and plus, 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 plus other terms. So I'm looking for which, which term? I'm looking for the coefficients of the power 1 over z, so that means power minus 1 of z. And you can immediately notice, oh, I have 1 here. So this product gives me this power. And then I look here, oh, I have also this one. This also gives me this power. And I look at the fourth, and that means that one also gives me the power minus 1. So in such a case, let me, let me, com let me, let's say, now those are the coefficients. Let me write all these coefficients. So you have here z, so we have your first product 1 over z then you have the second so this is my first one this is my second so this will be z squared times 1 3 factorial z cubed plus and this will be my third one so this will be z 4 times 1 5 factorial z5 and then you simplify pull this one out and you are getting 1 plus 1 6 and this is plus and that one is 1 5 fact so 5 factorial so of course this gives me 1 z and here we are getting how much is 1 uh, 5 factorial so this is uh, 6 24 120 so this is 120, so you have 120 plus, uh, plus 20 plus 1. This is divided by 120. And we are obtaining that, that this coefficient standing by z will be exactly 141 divided by 1. 20, you can simplify it, actually, this will be uh, 3 divided by 3, so this will be 4, 7, and this one, this divided by 3 is 40. One. Yeah, so it's 141, and we are getting the residue of this function f of z at 0 is equal 47 and 40. 47 and 40. Mm. Okay, so we have seen several examples for the computations of the residue. Next time we will be applying the theorem, the Cauchy residue theorem, and we will be computing the integrals we will be computing the integrals. And that's it for today. Thank you.